Hey, it's Fern back with you, and in this video, I'm going to talk about all those counter surfers out there. All right, today's question comes from actually two people sent me the same question, Tony, Ann, and Colleen, and they want to know, how can I stop my dog from taking food off the counter? Okay, common problem. Now, there's a way we can teach our dogs to do that, but again, we have to be realistic to make sure we're not setting our dogs up to fail. So if I put a steak on the, on the counter that smells really good and I give them a lot of room, I'm setting them up to fail. It's like bringing an alcoholic into a bar. I don't want to do that to them. So we want to set them up to succeed. So the first thing you have to understand, again, from your dog's perspective, um, he smells something he wants, so he's going for it. Number, the first thing you can do is just teach some impulse control. You know, teach your dog impulse control so that they know I don't always go, if I smell something and see something I want, I don't go forward. I actually wait and things come to me. If you want to learn how to teach that, check out this video right here that I did. And you'll see me teaching how I would teach my dog to it. And then you'll see the result of that as my dog is with my kids and they have food. So this is what we have to do. We have to teach them impulse control. Dogs don't come pre-programmed with that. You know, they're used to just if they want something, go get it. So we have to teach them that good things come to those who wait. That takes some time and training. So check out that video. But as a general guide, we have to do puppy proof when we're not available or not going to supervise. And that means even if you're in the room but not paying attention, that's not supervising. So I'm not going to leave stuff up there as a temptation if I can't be right there to work with the dog. So that's puppy proofing. That's management. But then when I want to work and I can be attentive, I'm going to put things on the counter. Ideally, I would like to start things that are not so motivating. Maybe not a steak, but maybe like a, a bagel or something that has a, is a little less tempting. Um, it could just be like a, a, an object. It doesn't even have to be food. But I would start something that's low impact. And what you want to do, the best way to train any behavior is to get your dog at the beginning of the thought process. So once he's got it, he's up on the counter and he's got his teeth on something, I can remove him, but I've just done a negative repetition. What I want to do is catch him when he's like, hmm, look at that, smells good. Because if I can catch him there at the beginning of that thought process, it's not going to take much to turn him around. Just simple, eh, 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 don't even think about it. It's probably all I have to do. And the more I'm teaching him, the more he's learning about how to live in this world. You also want to make sure you're giving your dog a very calm association to food. It, again, teaching impulse control will do that. We want to make sure they're only getting food when they're calm. Because if they're excited around food, then just the scent of it sends them into a little bit of a crazy state of mind where they make bad decisions and do dopey things like jump on the counter. So we want to make sure your dog is always getting food in a calm state of mind. That is so important and so overlooked. Um, so don't always look what your dog is doing. I don't care if he sits. Is he calm? And is the food coming to him? So if I'm going to give him that food, is he leaning forward? No, that's him going towards it. That's no good. He doesn't get it then. It's got to be delivered right to him. Also, you can teach your dog, you know, a leave it command. Uh, we, you know, I'll save that for another video. Uh, but basically, supervise, teach your dog the rules, work on impulse control, and then puppy proof and remove those distractions when you can't be there. The, the more repetitions that happen of the dog jumping on the counter, the more likely he's going to continue to do it. All right, I hope that helps. If you like these tips and would like more, how about signing up for my free newsletter where you'll get articles, tips on behavior, and training every two weeks. Also, you get my free guide, the 10 quick and simple ways to a better and happier dog. Sign up on the link somewhere around this video. That's it for now. Have a great day with your dog, and I'm going to see you real soon.